All right, guys, I am back. Uh, just waiting on Joe to let me know that he's back. And we'll get started with our Group B match of Rukan versus Tord. Um, I'm sure, a lot of you guys are eager to watch Tord play and see what interesting things he has in his Malamar deck. Um, Rukan also has some uh, pretty cool. Um, out of the norm cards in, uh, there's Joe. Out of the norm cards in his Malmar list. Welcome back, Joe. Yo. <laughs> All good. <sighs> yep, yeah, I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. Perfect. Um, so I'm ready to go too. Let's jump into Rukan Shao versus Thor the Malmar mirror match here in three, two, one, go. <laughs> So apparently I edited the names onto the intro, that's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna see Tord side. Um, both both of these players, they used a, a few weird settings when recording and stuff, so I like I had to choose um, between each like who to sh who to feature and who to to have at the top. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, this should be. An interesting match for sure. So I believe is Tor playing the same sixty as Pedro? It looks very similar. I believe I'm so. At. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. And Rukan with his own build, obviously, he is mm -hmm. known more than anything else for being a Malamar specialist. Yeah, yeah. He was um, apparently the innovator of having um, the Chimeco, right? Mm -hmm. Which like Chimeco generally became one of the most popular. Uh, text in Malamar. Um, we do see him debating benching that Ultra and Cross mob before using the Lily, and these are the heartbreaking Lilies, right? When you Lily into <laughs> just four unplayable cards. Oh, that's rough. Rukan gets down a type of Coco turn one, though, and that's a good mirror tech because if you're the one dictating the Sky Scorching Light, it can be a really big deal. So already his own techs are going to be a big factor in this matchup. Tord immediately debating whether or not he wants to Jirachi at all this game. Instead, he's just going to get rid of it. Yeah, which I think is a smart choice, right? Like any card advantage that Jirachi could give you, um, assuming a game that plays out to the late game, it's just not going to be worth it versus that extra prize that you end up giving up against yeah. the Sky Scorching Light that might just end up costing you the game. Yeah, it really is a liability in this matchup. Instead, I'm going to see attachment to the active. He led a GX Pokemon, which sometimes is a little awkward when you're normally trying to go for a Giratina war against one another from the majority of the game. Um, but at the very least, he gets one in K down. Rukan, because he attached to a Tapu Koko, is unable to get you know, any Guzma knockout plays on this in K unless it was exactly the Ultra Necrozma. Uh, but that's not an option in his hand currently. So uh, going to see him crack on with a nice treasure top deck to find himself a second in K. Mali comes down, he attaches to the active and plays a Cynthia. He is playing three copies of Switch in his list. This Psychic Recharge as well. Does draw into one of those Switches, so at the very least he can flying flip here. Yeah, which is like, obviously not your game plan against an, uh, Don Wings and just one in K, but that's his tech for the mirror match, right? He's, mm -hmm. His intention of having the Coco is to accelerate the Sky Scorching Light Wind Condition and perhaps have um, Pokemon that would not normally be in range after a few Distortion Doors actually be in range. Wow, so Rukan tries to go for the reload and he let loose himself into Double Guzma, two Psychics, gives toward the Erika. That's gonna be pretty big. That's pretty heart-wrenching for Rukan. The flying flip really isn't getting much value out here either, too much. So, Tord's going to kick his turn off with the Erika here. He gets his way out of this awkward hand. But once again, he's supportless now as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he does have ult roll for Lele if he uh -huh. really wants to commit to that. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an awkward hand because he's not getting an attack off this. Oh no, he is. He can't get an attack off, never mind. But it's not enough to KO the Coco. Mm. Yeah, so he's debating whether it's even worth getting this attack rolling. 
Yeah. Forces a few things onto the board. Also spends your Ultra Ball, which he may want to use for a supporter next turn. He may have to just say attach yeah. pass is actually the play here. Yeah, which, I mean, given Rukan's focus so far on the spreading strategy, I guess, um, it makes sense, right? Because if he's spreading onto just two Pokemon, then that's not going to be very effective. Also, there's, you know, all three Psych Energy, there are none remaining in Rukan's discard pile, so it does need a lot for any big response attack. Rukan gets bailed out with a nice Cynthia, though. <laughs> that's always pretty good. Pretty nice, yeah. Not much else though, once again, good. though. Yeah, just another Malamar. And just a flying flip once again. Yeah. Oh, and remember when I said none of these eight players were playing Let Loose? Well, there's a Let Loose in play ah, in the right side of the field. So. One. My yeah. bad. And I, I distinctly remember him saying he'd rather have double Lele over 1-1 one, one Lele Let Loose, which has been kind of the standard. So mm -hmm. generally surprised at seeing that. Well, Rukan's an experimenter. If there's one thing he is, he tests every option. So maybe this is one of his, you know, recipes that he's cooking up and seeing what's, what he likes best. Maybe he likes the two Lele now, after seeing Let Looses like that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see Tor drop the Inke, put down the Ultra, and he is gonna find himself Lele to get himself a supporter. Interesting to see if he wants to commit this escape board onto this Lele. Feels like a reasonable place for it. It's one of your one retreaters. Yeah, that seems like the best choice. Um, so yeah, both players kind of stumbling through this early game. Um, mm -hmm. But Tord will be the one to take the first prize here, and we'll see how Rukan tries to to respond he does have a pretty well like kind of a like a neat play into the giratina hit for 130 and then maybe distortion door guzma to get the ko on that stone wings if you wanted to do that like fancy play but yeah Tord gonna go ahead and toss one of his stretches away i'm also just expecting rukan so far he's only seen the spread package from rukan so he definitely wants to try and evolve up this malamar not giving him a free flying flip prize. Uh, he's got the awkward debate. Do I want to commit beast energy now? Or do I want to maybe forest away a Guzma and get a basic psych energy? Yeah, it's a beast tough energy decision. is nice in this matchup because it's similar to a Zoroark, right? You're giving yourself one less energy to reach on an opposing ultra. I feel like I would choose to get rid of the Guzma. I think so. Ooh. He's actually going to get rid of Lily. What? That's pretty high tempo. That high tempo is... from Tord. Wow. Well, Malamar plays off the board. He's got one Malamar in play, three energy here, one in hand and a Guzma. Also, maybe some prizes that we don't know about. It's a big risk from Tord. That is super risky. Like, that goes against everything that I coach people. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, what? Don't leave yourself with nothing is pretty much one of the first golden yeah, rules, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, like what's taking tempo. Huh? My my number one play would have been to get rid of the Guzma. My number two play would have been to attach the piece. Definitely my yeah. last play would have been to get rid of the Lily. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to ask him. Yeah. That was crazy. It may also come down to what's prize as well. He may be taking risks saying there's a yeah. number of things that he could pull from prizes. Yeah. <laughs> There's Tord in chat. This is the best card. Best card in matchup. I mean, <laughs> I can't debate that, but that's so <laughs> risky, Tord. Well, we're seeing Rukan get a response with a Giratina here. Yeah. It gets it 10 short of a Dawnwings. He's going to need one of his own best cards for the matchup for that Dawnwings later on with a Distortion Door. No. That's what he's saying. Up for. Yeah, attaching that. I mean, placing the damage on yourself, you're literally telling uh, Tord, I want you to knock me out because I have the Guzma play, right? It's a good thing Tord kept the Guzma. Good thing Tord <laughs> kept the Guzma, yeah. Good thing Tord kept the Guzma. I mean, 
if you're generally considering that, then fair. But off of the Lily, you still have a chance to find the Guzmas, and I don't know that. And then Rukan also needs to have the Guzma as well for him to be able to pull off the Giratina play. So there's so many things in play. Um, yeah, I don't. I. I mean, it's well, great. it I mean, definitely worked out for this turn. Depends how many bull search as well Tord had left. Obviously, like the first thing he drew into was like a treasure. Yeah. Um, you do play a lot of bull search in your own deck, so you have a lot of outs, and especially because he's playing double Lele, he actually has a good number of outs to find draw support, even just off the top. It feels random and sketchy, but at the very least, like he knew he always had this play available to him. This was always something he could do with the Guzma play, take another prize, continue to get energy flowing onto the board. And I think he's kind of been forced this route just because he started with a GX to begin with. He has to go down this sort of awkward line. But yeah, I still feel like holding onto a Lily never feels like a bad move. It's just Guzma's a good turn here for sure. And then, you know, might force Rukan to three shot this Necrozma, which is amazing for him. Yeah, of course. Hmm. So, once again, top taking a Cynthia, that's pretty nice. Rukan's um, got a stretcher Guzma play with flying flip here. That could be pretty reasonable. Yeah, that actually seems the best course of action. He's also got two Malamar in his discard pile, so you may just want to reload those as well. Reload them into the deck. Two already gone. Tord's a good boy. He looks at the discard piles. Good man. <laughs> There's also, yeah, he doesn't even need to Guzma, he could just uh, do a Cynthia play. Yeah, there was no energy in the discard pile. He... Wow, that's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Rukan's drawn some hands. That's yeah, cool. <laughs> definitely. That's for sure. Oh, there yeah. are energy in the discard pile, sorry. What am I yeah. saying? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was wondering why the Malamars were not being highlighted, but I forgot that we're looking at Torch's perspective, not Rukan's. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see double recharge. I'd be surprised if we saw Viridian. He could get rid of the Ultra Ball if he wants to. But Rukan's now in the supporterless hands, so Tor choosing to go draw supporterless. Yeah. Rukan finding his way into no supporter. <laughs> drawing two cards at least though. <laughs> draw supporter privilege, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a Lele. We're gonna be okay. So he will be able to get return KO pretty easily thanks to the beast. Um, this is where the game starts getting really interesting for Malamar players because, especially on Tord's side of the field, like there's a lot of damage on two Malamars now. We know that Sky Scorching Light can take two prizes. They're currently level, and it's down to Tord to really try and shake up Rukan and make it so that he can't just Sky Scorch for game. Especially because Rukan has no GXs in play at all. It's really down to Tor to try and make something happen here. Feels Rukan with the extra couple GXs that he plays means he is the one in charge of uh, the Sky Scorching. He's really trying to tech hard for Mirror by the looks of things. So, Tor, at the very least, he can respond on this Coco, go down to three prizes on his own end. So, Tor does not have Let Loose, right? He... No, just double Lele. Yeah, he has the other Lele, which... Um... Maybe that's what he's contemplating. Feels like it. Just like whether he can go for a Mali knockout. He's going to commit the metal to the Tina. He's already... You know, that stadium's never going to get bumped. They both play it, and he's already holding on to Beast, so I don't mind it at all. Yeah, definitely seems like the right call, because the extra damage from the Psychic could be significant at some point, but... Todd's just saying, well, 30 is the same as 60. Yeah. 70 means that a Flying Flip can do things, but... And that is two Flying Flips and a Stretcher down for Rukan. So the odds mm. of finding another one are probably low enough to where Tord is comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. 
It's interesting they didn't just slap it all on the Tina, though. Feels likely when you're both just in a Shadow Impact war that that's going to yeah. be the best place to put the damage. But yeah. instead, he's just saying, yeah, take the, take the Mallies. Perfect bait. Yeah, Tort <laughs> <laughs> didn't go for the Lele because that was actually his prize card. So, can't Mysterious Treasure for a card that is not there, yeah. right? And it also points towards him earlier taking that tempo prize, maybe trying to fish for a supporter or a Lele that he knew was there. Rukan's responding with his own Tina here. He's eyeing up Ditto and Ultra Necrozma, thinking whether or not it's worth trying to set any of these other guys up. Have the potential to put them into play or not. So Rukan's route is very much going to be knock out a Giratina, knock out another Pokemon GX for game. And Tord's route is knock out this GX now that Rukan's had to put one down, and then just get a Giratina. So I think Tord's actually ahead here because he's been very disciplined with his Malamars. Only kept two on board the entire time. He knows that Rukan's always setting up this Ultra play. So now Tord. Tord actually has Sky Scorching Light on, of his own as an option with Ditto and Martelo down. He could just Sky Scorch here. And then he just needs any individual prize knockout. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that Malamar having 10 damage, he can win this turn, right? Because he could Mysterious Treasure for the Giratina, then Viridian Forest it away, bring back both Giratinas, place oh, two damage nice. counters on that Malamar, and then he GXs away. Tord's just thinking for if he can do it. Yeah. I mean, maybe the Giratina is priced, right? Maybe he hasn't seen it, but mm. we'll see. At the very least, there's no problem in promoting this Lele, right? Yeah, that, that would definitely be the immediate promotion. Yeah, winning this turn is actually very much in sight for Tord. Yeah. We'll Double see if door. the Giratina... Is in there, and I mean, it's not a very clear play, right? So, might not necessarily have crossed Tord's mind, although it is Tord, so. I think he yeah. sees it. There you go. <laughs> I think it's pretty quick. Yep, there you go. Door, door, game. Yeah. And putting down that ditto. Pretty much just easing Tord into a win here. Yep. Really interesting when Rukan's trying to do the sort of tech. You just play disciplined with your Mallies. You know, you're not worried about your attackers going down if you're just getting hit with Flying Flip. You can just have that low um, bench size towards doing the stuff, and he's the one getting to Sky Scorch first. And oftentimes, the one who Sky Scorchings first just carries the game. Really nice play from Tord. Even choosing to attach a Metal Energy, not showing off the Beast Energy. Some players don't play Beast, remember. Some people just play basic metals so it's not even giving Rukan information really nice game from Tord overall yeah, yeah he had a Cynthia and a Lele prize so he had a 33%er to get a supporter on that one turn where he went supporter loss essentially outside of Guzma yeah amazing the, amazing game what seemed like a, a slow start for Tord ended up um, kind of benefiting him mm. because then yeah, he didn't get the crazy, like, triple inky down, get the Giratina, get everything down, and then the Coco was just not as useful as Rukan would have liked it to. And yes, it did, like, spread and get a KO on the Dunwings and whatnot, but that was a bit underwhelming at that point. Three hit KOing at GX, it definitely, like, the old, the Dunwings definitely paid itself, paid for itself. What was really interesting for me was Rukan was the player going first, and you'd never know it because his first two attacks were just flying flips. If he was the one, because he went first, he's the one that can initiate the Giratina pressure. He's the one that could have been going ahead and putting Tord into that awkward spot and saying, hey, Tord, if you want to you know, level up the prize trade, I can then Sky Scorch for win. Instead, he went really passive. Tord then was able to stay passive as well because, you know, um, he's not worried about Flying Flip for 2020. Uh, so... Rukan committing energy onto a Coco when you're the one going first before Tord even committed many stuff, many things to his bench, really just played into Tord's hands. So, I mean, if you're the player going first, it feels like you can be the aggressor in the matchup. And Rukan sort of 
passed the mantle to Todd to say, hey, you take the first prize, I'm just going to flip for a long time. And it really ended up benefiting Todd. Yeah, and then uh, Tord himself roasting us here with the discard the Kuzma comment. <laughs> well, you, you know, <laughs> I don't mind it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely fair. Um, definitely, definitely fair. With the game, with the way the game played out, um, that was definitely the right call. I mean, Tord didn't play another supporter the whole game, <laughs> so... Yeah. Did he? I think he played like one Erica. Yeah, I think so. Easy clap. Okay, so Devil Rukan gonna choose to go first here. You gotta a turn to establish your setup, establish your board, and we'll see we'll see what he has in store for us in this second game. Mm-hmm. So if well, Giratina start for towards not ideal. Rukan with a pretty reasonable hand, but maybe forced to Lele or let loose turn one. Ah, he picks up a Lily, that's huge. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing top deck for him. Now we can have a pretty much Dream, Ultra Ball, Tina, and Psychic, both the things you want to bin off as quickly as possible. Yeah. He can grab second in K. I wonder if he'll change his approach this game, especially because there's a Giratina already in his discard. He can, you know, just get turn one attachment to it at the very least. Pretty awesome Lily for seven here with three NKs already in play. But here we go. He's favoring Coco once again. Yep, just attaching to it all over and sending it towards way. Didn't work for him in game one. Being stubborn and going for it again on the game two <laughs> is pretty pretty interesting for me. Especially with a Tina start, it feels like you could be the one just going so far ahead of Tord. Yeah, like if you're Rukan here, you want to get as as much pressure as you can, and um, if you play into the sky scorching light and you get this Gira like if you get three spreads against this Giratina, that's gonna be super cost effective for him. That's true. That's true. We are going to see Tord go ahead, get an NK of his own down. He can escape board and draws into no draw supporters, but he has a Guzma at least, his favorite. Got turn one attachment potentially. He may be eyeing up attaching to the Ultra and Necrozma turn one, just so he can make some Guzma plays and actually take some prizes turn two. He's going to go ahead and look for... Well, he thinks about going for Metal. Instead, he's going to pick up a Psychic. Again, you don't ever expect the Stadium to go. So yeah. you can always just grab Psychic Energies. Yeah, what, he's going to commit it to the Tina. What other Stadium could you possibly play? It would um, be like Altar of the Moon. That was like the old yeah. the old Stadium of choice. But yeah. We do see Rukan is running the Gengar and Mimikyu attack. See, if, if Rukan had attached to a Tina turn one, he'd be Guzma killing Inke here, and he just wins the game. Like, yeah. How does he lose if he does that? But instead, it's just another flying flip for 2020. And it yeah. feels so weak. It feels so weak compared to what it could have been. Yeah, maybe it's like, maybe it's a little bit of a tunnel vision in a way. It's like, yes, Coco is going to be great if your opponent has a board full of Malamars and whatnot, but if they don't, then like you're not really accomplishing much. This might be going the same direction that we saw game one, you know. Tord starts a slow, chunky attacker that he attaches to three times, keeps yeah. only one NK on board. But he is the one taking the first prize still, and he's the one that gets Sky Scorch first. <laughs> it just feels super weird that this is going identically to the first game. It feels like Rukan, like you said, tunnel vision. It's maybe he's played the matchup enough time to think this is the route every game, but it's not reading the board as well as it could be. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's how it feels. He's not reading the situation uniquely. Now Tord is able to uh, put down this Ultra. And again, Tord may have had to put down the Ultra last turn and attach to it if Rukan had put the Giratina on the board. Yeah. Uh, now Tord can take the first prize on this Mali. Yeah. Feels good. Rukan doesn't seem like he has a great response. He needs a lot to respond here. Picks up a Lele from prizes, that's definitely appreciated. Yeah. But I mean, knowing Torch, he's just gonna have really enforced it away though. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know. It could get him a Guzma, so. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So, so Rukan's got some choice of his own. He's got the option of treasure here. 
if he wants to get rid of his own let loose. He's kind of ridding it away, it looks like. Maybe we'll start seeing some Tina get built up at this point. I mean, Tina or... I mean, you have the option to go for a big play here, right? With potentially... I mean, it's too many cards, probably. It asks uh, for a lot, but for Lily for yeah. four. It's asking for a lot of cards. Yeah. Well, I mean, if he had grabbed a medal and then he... Mysterious Treasure away at Kuzma and Ben, it would have been mm -hmm. a Lily for five where you're looking for two Malamars and a Choice Band, which is probably oh. not likely at all. Yeah, it's pretty rough. I feel like he's, you know, in deep with this Coco. I think he's going for let's flying flip, let's try and do that to the point that the Giratina takes the knockouts on this. Yeah. Okay, he did get double Malamar. Wow. Not the goods. A bit of an awkward like yeah. draw for Rukan though. He keeps running into this well if I don't top the gut supporter I might be mm -hmm. a bit out of luck. And like last game he had to Lele and that just could have been one of the ways that he lost to Tord. It just turned out he also benched a Ditto to lose immediately. Yeah. But <laughs> if he uh the Lele could have been another win condition for Tord in that first game, and it may end up becoming a win condition again for him. I mean, yeah, it's just... Rukan is dealing 60 damage per turn. That's it's... not really impactful in this mirror yeah. match. And Tord's just going to keep, you know, taking the prizes. Going yeah. ahead. As long as he takes a prize every turn, it's going to be fine. Yeah. And it, it really means that you're the one in charge of Sky Scorch most of the time. Yeah. Because your opponent's trying to respond KO on you eventually. And when that's the case, you're the one getting to Sky Scorch first. And we saw how it closed game last time around. And if Tord can keep Gooseberry up Mallies, it forces Rukan to put down more 60 hit point Pokemon. And that's what's, that's what's the real killer. Because yep. it's like a lose lose situation. So. Well, it does get his second in K down, finally. Looks like he's deciding whether or not he wants to put down this Jirachi or Ultra Bullet away, possibly. Instead, he's just going to take the knockout with Shadow Impact. This time, does put the damage on himself. Definitely seems like the right play. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like Rukan invested two turns to spreading damage, but that only got, like, one Malabar closer to to the Sky Scorching Light, because the active is going to go down, and Ultra Grosma is just nowhere near close to even getting KO'd by Giratina, so that seems honestly quite, like, not worth the investment, right? It's two turns that Rukan effectively lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. When he was the player going first as well, which feels really weird. Feels really weird to be two turns behind when you're the one starting off the game. <laughs> getting to evolve first and getting your extra attachments first. He is actually going to put down the fourth Inke here just so he can get a attachment sort of pivot Pokemon. But Tord should be fairly content to just promote a Tina here. He's just thinking whether or not he wants to attack with any other option. Thinking things through. Thinking about where he needs a shadow impact this turn might be his hardest decision, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to give Rukan the free prize, and it would also put the. They will try into range. Um, so perhaps you would end up benching the Jirachi as a target for that, but. Yeah, it feels like it might be Ultra Ball just for another Inke as well. That could also easily be the move. He's thinking if he wants to. Uh, make a Guzma play, I guess is the only consideration for why he's not immediately promoting this Tina. He is respecting the potential for more distortion doors. But if you're just making a Guzma play with only one Malamar on board, it comes with its own risk. Picking up a Tina is always nice. You love putting it in the bit, in the discard pile. Yeah. You've got two ways that you can do it and start getting the Mallies in range. I mean, okay, so Tord is at four prizes. Rukan would be at three prizes. 
think about this. Like, if if he distortion doors here, that's one counter on two. Uh huh. Malamars. Oh no, never mind. I was thinking distortion door plays three damage counters, and so that's that would have been too broken. <laughs> never mind. I was thinking he could he could KO his own Malamar to get a third distortion door next turn, um, <laughs> but he needs to wait for one turn to do that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and he needs Athena to actually get knocked out again, right? Yeah. Rukan's holding on to Guzma plays. Yeah, we see the Inke. Can see the distortion door perhaps. Will Tord hold on to this Lele? I feel like he is going to, yeah. Really valuing the the option to Guzma when he needs to. Yeah. Gonna attach to the Ultra. Gonna play Lily here for four cards. Will he take the option to Distortion Door just so he can do a Psychic Recharge? He's holding on to Board and Switch, so there's not too much need to put on something like the NK here. Yeah, true. Although... Hmm. Like... Then he's gonna need to invest one energy. Um, he would have needed to invest one energy, like one card to discard from the Iridian Forest to establish that extra energy. I don't know. I mean, it feels like he's just having the potential threat if there are any gonna be any GX moves coming out from uh, from Rukan, any GX attackers. I feel like the Shadow Impact's gonna go on the Inke. Yeah, I think it should be. Unless we're going to see anything crazy. He might be thinking about accelerating his own distortion door win condition. Yeah. That genuinely might be a thought that's going through his head at this point. He's going down to three prizes. And put a second Tina in the bin. It's, it's tempting. And also you have to be concerned about, you know, if you put it onto your own in case and Rukan does get to the Sky Scorch, it's always going to be a worry. Yeah, because you've just, you've just set up another prize for him. Uh-huh. Immediately. So maybe even distortion during the Giratina back and placing the damage there could have been. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was pretty surprised not to see it, to be honest. Oh my god, he's hovering over Malamar. Even PTC Joe is telling him <gasps> to do it. <laughs> well, he's got two attackers. Wow. So. Yeah. Man, it's amazing. Man. I need Tor to coach me. I need He'd... Tor to coach me too. <laughs> he makes plays that I don't think anyone else would do. It's it's like the previous um Brian Forest. Like that would have been my last choice. Mm -hmm. Literally would have been my last choice. And I'm sure there is very intelligent reasons why that's the case, but I'm imagining in chat he'll just send us a smiley face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It's time to set up the third attacker. I guess. I can't question it. <laughs> and he's, yeah, he's accelerating towards the Distortion Door win con on his own end. Yeah. He's already got GX attack knockout options. Giratina's still here if Rukan's gonna do some any more Inkes. Maybe towards saying Psychic Recharge has done enough. Why would I leave this eventual prize for Rukan when I can accelerate my own Distortion Door win con with Sky Scorch? Rukan's just gonna recycle Tina. Probably gonna One of the target best things them. Is, yeah, go on. Probably gonna target down the Inke here. It's hard. I mean, there's six energy in play. Is it even worth it? Especially when you see this, this is like the mind game thing. Towards towards showing Rukan, he doesn't care that his Malamar just he did it himself. He killed his own Malamar. Rukan might have been thinking, oh, Guzma the Malamar next turn. Towards just completely bamboozled him yeah. and putting in Rukan in spots that he's not seen before. And we've seen that Rukan, you know, might be a bit too if there's ever a criticism of him over the last couple games he's been too automatic he's not played off towards board state too much and when towards putting him in situations he's unfamiliar 
it might make Rukan play differently as well. Yeah. Okay, so Rukan says, if you take a prize, well, huh. I am very confused. Okay, so Rukan can Sky Scorch for three prizes now. Yeah. If Tord gives him that option. Tord can take <clears throat> a single prize here, only ever, and then he can. Hmm. There's even the option for a Tapicure again this turn. Why is Tapicure always the out? <laughs> <laughs> when when did you ever imagine you would see Tapakure or potentially discuss Tapakure more than yeah. once <laughs> when yeah. casting this tournament? I mean, I've I've got to try and jump into Tord's brain that's already far superior, making plays that I've never even it's not even been in my scope. So I've got to just say words, say options, because he might pick one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so Rukan's win condition is Sky Scorching Light next turn and leave Tord with just a Malamar, right? So Tord needs to take a prize here and have something else powered up ready to um, take down that uh, Ultra Grusma, right? So that would be the goal to power mm -hmm. up a second Ultra Grusma. I think yeah. that makes sense. And there is Ultra and Cruise Man, he can literally... I mean, uh, Eric has for 5, I believe, so... Mm -hmm. It's true. It's got to be what he's after here. He may be foregoing to take an energy. He's thinking about if he can play enough cards for Erika, yeah. or if he wants to play a different supporter. Yeah, and I think that's fine, because Rukan doesn't have the double... Like, he doesn't have the bench space to double... Uh, distortion door plus sky scorching light to make yep. sure that the Malamar goes down and he takes four prizes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems like the right route. And uh, Rukan only plays one Giratina as well. He plays double Coco, but one oh, yeah. Giratina. Yeah, so not even possible. Tord doesn't know that, but it's actually not possible for multiple distortion door plays if Tord tries to gust around it, which he. Has always been very proactive at doing, as we know. He eyeing up Guzma here. Forcing Rukan to have another gusting effect for his Ultra Necrozma. Not sure I agree with this though. This yeah, like you said, this isn't setting up another Ultra Necrozma. But there's three Guzmas played from Rukan. Mm. This is an interesting one. Sure. He might just be putting down the Lele for the escape board target and grabbing the Guzma and still going for an Erica play. But no, it looks like and he's up the Just as you say that, he starts playing yeah. the Guzma. Yeah. At least he's taking a long time. He's thinking things. Ah, oh, it's Tapicure, Pog. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it could still be a skateboard. Yeah, it could still be a skateboard. <laughs> oh! Pog! Yay! Second Tapu Gear of the Invitational. What the heck? <laughs> Could have been the third. Could, Could have, have been, been the third. third. What? See, this, is, this is why, as commentators, you just say words and maybe they do those and things. And hope. <laughs> <laughs> Two Tapu Gears, one Invitational. What the heck? <laughs> a really solid option. I mean... Toward not wanting to fall into some ugly Ultra Necrozma traps from Rukan. <sighs> Rukan not wanting to put down any more GXs, he's going to keep going with the Tina route. He's just going to switch into it. Ooh, the Marshadow GX for me and Gengar is a way to get a KO. But yeah, it's like I'm not sure what Rukan is playing towards. Why, like, wouldn't now your win condition become knockout Lele, knockout Ultra Grusma? Yeah. And he had the the way to search for Ultra Grusma. I mean, he can still knock out Lele with the uh, Marshadow GX, but I'm I'm not very See, clear. Is, yeah. Doing another one thirty here doesn't progress. Yeah. The game nearly as much as he would like. Seems 
And like now, now you you yeah. don't even mind going into sky scorching light turns because Tord can't sky scorching light anymore. Yeah. There's no downside to it. There's no wacky distortion door plays. Tord is literally just trying to take three prizes before Rukan takes uh, the four. So Tord's route is just simply try and recycle the Giratina in an attacking sense. Yeah. And use Ultra when you have to. What an interesting game this has become. Yeah, it, it, it feels like both players are playing to not lose rather than playing to win. There Rukan. are these, yeah, I mean, playing Mirror, there are these really awkward stalemates. Yeah. Where you just have to respect the, the Sky Scorching Light power at points, and you're like, well, it's just too much of a worry. I can't do things. And I mean, Tord, if he takes a prize, he can't put down any more Inkes, right? So unless he wants to take another turn of not taking a prize, he can't. he's limited to this one Malamar. So at the very least, he has to have some manual attachments on some other Pokemon here, i got to think. He has no more psychic energy in his deck. Just the one remaining metal. You're not going to see the Erica though. Yeah, both players are trying to to maneuver around Sky Scorching. They're worried about the damage output, but I don't know if I'm Rukan like. I'm nowhere near close to getting Sky Scorching Light. Like the previous turns, and now I'm definitely not gonna Sky Scorching Light. So why not commit to a big GX? No, it doesn't feel doesn't feel right, especially when there's only one Malamar on Tord's side. Like you can just jam it. You can be like, yeah, he's got the instant response with his own Ultra, but then he can't take the last two sometimes. Yeah. Tord's gonna go ahead and Lele for that Guzma proactively. Treat out of his damaged Lele. I mean, okay, so no matter what happens here, Rukan, I believe, will go Guzma, attack the other Tapu Lele, and then he can Sky Scorching Light, right? Yeah. I think that's what's. That would be my train of thought. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's gotta be his, that's gotta be his route. Yeah, but it's like if he had gone for the big GX attack. The only way Tord responds is with a big GX, so he doesn't even need to find Kuzma. So the game would have been over in two turns rather than three. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, obviously he lost game one. He's being extremely cautious. And um, I can see it finally paying off here after um, if he is able to target down the Lele, which he should be able to, then all he needs to do is find the Ultra to, to Sky Scorching Light. So... Toward now, oh sorry, Rukan now, he's able to recycle this Tina again. He's gonna forest for a psychic, he can do a bunch of recharges. But you're right, it feels like the Guzma seems like a pretty reasonable play. Yeah. Either on the Lele or on the Ultra Guzma, it doesn't make a difference, but it sets up a four price turn for Rukan next turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Onto the ultra, and then make sure you have a way to retreat, which I guess is not that relevant. Yeah, second energy on Inke, <laughs> playing around the Absol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. Something which like that. Rukan does run Absol, right? So I mean. That is oh, generally a way to play just around absolutely everything. Wow, he actually does play the absolutely right. So, yeah. Rukan is a very interesting build. It looks like he's got over the line in this game too. Just a little bit. Like, yeah, he played super, super careful. Super, super gone. careful. There's, there's honestly potentially a chance that Todd was only playing around three Guzmas. This is one thing about Rukan, he's always going to have his own 60 card list. You can't really expect what counts he's playing. Tord may have just been playing around three Guzmas here. 
and the fourth one coming down, setting up this full price turn is huge. Yeah. No more top of gears left for Tord. All he's doing is looking through Rukan's discard pile and seeing, hmm, knowing getting this knowledge for game three might generally be what he's doing at the moment. Yeah. What do I play around? I've seen Coco, I've seen Gengar Mimikyu, <laughs> or Guzmas. Yeah, Tor does uh, comment to us in the chat that he he was surprised by the fourth one. Yeah, yeah, Tor's literally saying the same thing, yeah. Fourth Guzma, not standard in the list. Rukan, he'll always play his own way. Which is fair, right? I don't think there's uh, a one way to play any deck, any tech cards, any like. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no absolutes in Pokemon. I would say. So it's towards win condition. Well, just hope Rukan hasn't played a draw supporter for the last couple of turns. Maybe he can't sky scorch. Yeah, that's all That'll he can be do. The only outs. Yeah, forty on the lele. Yep. Seems fine. All the Guzmas are gone. That's not what we are afraid of. Is that self KO what made the difference here? I mean, it's... imagine if there was another Giratina on this board with like 40 other damage. Yeah. I mean, and an extra the, Malamar would, the Malamar would still be in range. Oh, yeah, they, true. Uh, that's true. Sky Scorch and a, you know, they're still at four prizes to one, so. Yeah, that's uh, sorry, true. it would be four to five, and it would still do the same thing in effect. That is so very true. I don't true. think it was a big deal. To definitely making Rukan learn more about this matchup. I think <laughs> this is probably a way that Rukan's never seen it go before. And Tord found out the hard way that Rukan does play. Fourth Guzma. So Sky Scorching is going to wrap up and equal up game two. We're having our next game three for today. Happy days. Yeah, we haven't had too many of these best of threes go to a game three. Mm -hmm. This is only the second one, I think. Yeah, only the second one. And we've seen Tord always be going second in the first two games. He's usually the one taking the first prize anyway, so I wonder if him going first will change his approach at all. It might even make the Tapu Koko stronger when you're the player going second, because in theory, Torb will have already benched some stuff. So I don't know. It seemed like Tort was very purposely not benching. I feel like it's time course, for yeah. for Rukan to adapt, right? Like it, like both games, it felt like. Um, Rukan was not realizing that Tord was not purposely like not purposely benching stuff. He yeah. he might have thought uh, Tord was not having a great draw. Um and that's why he insisted on the Coco because at some point Tord would just fill up the bench. Um yeah. but that never happened. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we go for the Well, depending on what kind of store the store <laughs> what kind of start Tord has how Rukan um, plays out his um, more techy Malamar list. Yeah. His build is super, super teched out. I don't think I've ever seen a list like it. It plays Trimeco, it plays Absol, double Coco, one Tina. Really, really interesting Pokemon lineup. And he's playing uh, the Acrobike build over the the Jirachi base build, so just the three physical switches and four Guzmas instead of any copies of a skateboard. And it only plays nine energy as well. Only two metal energies. You'd think. He's only playing one Ultra Necrozma as well. This is really strange. <laughs> so you only have two metal, but you only have one Tina as well. So if that Tina's prized, like what the Yeah, it doesn't seem like you do have the win condition of the spread, but I guess he's banking more on KOing stuff like Jirachis and Marshadows rather than actually being able to get to the Malamar, right? His his mm. way to get to the Malamars is through Kogo. But if there's only one Malamar, like Tord has been purposely going for, then you don't really have that big of a shot doing that. Tord's got a pretty reasonable start. Rukan will probably have to bull search for a supporter of his own. But both players might need to put down a Lele turn one. 
Yep. Which could uh, change the dynamic of the non-GX versus GX games, right? Because exactly. in an ideal world, you want to just focus on Giratinas and Malabars in the early game and not bench a GX until you absolutely have to. But if you need to, like in Tort's case, in order to to actually be able to have a decent turn afterwards, then that does make for an interesting change of pace. So Rukan actually kicks off with the Absol here. Tord's holding onto an escape board, so he can't be too happy with that star. <laughs> but we're going to see Lele for Lily here. Still going to see the escape board. Maybe yeah. even, yeah, he's going to manually attach to the Inke. And then we're going to see the Lily here. Do you see Viridian, Nestball, maybe a couple more plays available? Tord's prized one of his two Tinas, so we have to bear that in mind for when he's trying to set up Sky Scorching. Yeah, at any point. Hmm. Which, I mean, knowing that, then you probably want to be as aggressive as you can, right? In order yep. to set up those those prices. The issue is the Absol will, is actually putting in a lot of work. If Rukan, I mean, if Tord decides to retreat into Lele to get that energy into a discard pile, then the other skateboard will not work for him to retreat the Lele. So it could get a bit awkward for him here. I, I think, think the plan is, yeah. yeah, I mean, now that he's attached... Psychic and board. It's basically the same when the Malamar evolves up. It basically has the same retreat cost, so mm -hmm. it means that he just needs to find double Mali next turn, and then manually attach to the uh, to the Tina. Yeah, true. Toward pre warning us that it's a crazy game. I've already been scratching my head for twenty minutes. So I don't know what the rest is in store. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we move over to Rukan. He's kicking off with an Acro bike. Interesting that he chose to bench the Inke first. I mean, it's one of those sort of pet peeve kind of things where he's almost always benching the Inke, but you might as well see the rest of your hand first. Yeah, definitely. The Ultra Ball afterwards. And then immediately treasure away the Tina. Okay, so fairly solid start for Rukan. Um, clean Lily for 8 always feels really good. Oh, there's the option of Chimeco. Can he get it active to someone? No, he can't. No, he can't. I mean, he could let loose to try and find <laughs> the out, but that feels a bit too aggressive, I would say. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, trusty Coco coming Trust down. Yeah, trusty Coco for Rukan here. Taught with the option of a Guzma play. Doesn't really want to put another Lele onto the board. That feels kind of rough. Yeah. Kind of rock rough. You can continue to forest away energies if he really feels like it. Thin towards a draw supporter. You definitely hold the Nest Ball, right? You don't. There's no need to establish another Pokemon. I think from what we've seen in the first two games, we know that he's always going to try and limit it to two yeah. at most. I actually think because he has the escape board in his hand, I think the best course of action is to get rid of the Absol, right? Like eliminating one of the three in case doesn't seem as great when his proposed threat is the Coco. That's true. Whereas he eliminating the Absol frees up the the escape board. And now he can attach it to a Lele to always have the pivot. Yeah, it's a fesh out. It's a really fesh out. And there's so many in case already in play that it doesn't really feel like it's affecting Rukan too much. It gives him the the only sort of downside of this is that it sort of gives Rukan the free retreat into the Coco immediately. Yeah. But even a Guzmringer uh, Inke would do the same thing. So yeah. Immediately the Tina comes out of prizes, so that's back on on the table. Rukan picks up a, a mysterious treasure. Treasure. Yep. Probably, yeah, the stadium. Like, the stadium and Chimeco are pro both probably equally useless at this point, but you never know about the Chimeco. Whereas the stadium, there's no way it's going to get replaced by either player. That's true. That's true. So, Mali number one comes down. Chimeco is getting binned, as you'd expect, for that psychic energy. Can I see the flying flip pressure from Rukan? Cynthia's into basically another Cynthia for next turn. That's really all we're looking at. Yeah. Flying flip, doing the stuff. 
I mean, without the beast, it does get a bit awkward to KO this Coco, but it's once again like he's not advancing in the price trade off. He's really focused on Sky Scorching to win. Mm hmm. It's worked one of the two games so far, even after Tor trying to deny it with a, uh, a Tapic Cure. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, if Rukan goes for this spreading strategy again, we generally might see a third Tapu Gear here. Yeah, it's I, not. I would not be surprised to see that at this <laughs> point. And I, I had the recordings. I promise you guys, I have not seen the games. I was just yeah. as surprised as anyone to see Tapu Gears happening. <laughs> <laughs> Two times, even. Yeah, dearie me. Someone's having a good ponder on what to do here. He has Guzma available to him. One of the only ways he can take a prize here, unless he's going to drastically add to this board. Ultra balling for a second Malamar and trying to get Giratina rolling, for example. Going to kick off with that Ultra Ball. Looks like Mali's coming out. Hmm. Probably going to see a Kuzma play. Could be the case, but Tita's in there now as well. It could still be uh, skateboard retreat. It feels so weak. It feels yeah. like it's still still going to be a Guzma play. Yeah. Well, let's get damage on these Manamars rolling. Yeah. It's going to so, be one of these standoff games. Would Would you <laughs> KO the Inke? The one with no damage on it. Yeah. I don't mind it. I think Tord will definitely have to consider it this turn. But if that's the case, then why not put the two damage counters on the in case and kill yeah. them all more? Yeah, that's a good good point. The senior skateboard go active. Maybe yeah. he's just dealing with the coca. Yeah, he he doesn't want the spread to keep happening. Instead, he'll just spread to his own dudes with Tina. Well, most likely onto himself. It may go onto one of the Malamars, thinking, you yeah, know what, you've got the distortion door anyway. Yeah, I'll save you the trouble. Yeah. And it doesn't, like, I mean, I don't think Rukan's plan would be to attack with Ultra and Grossma, but it takes away that option. Right mm -hmm. now, he has to find um, the, another Malamar and an attachment and the Giratina rather than just a switching card, the Metal and the Ultra. Like, if he puts the 40 on himself, then Ultra can get the KO off of one Malamar. If he mm. doesn't damage himself, then he definitely needs two Malamars, no matter which attacker he wants to use. So That's there's true. merit to that. Mm. I'm going to see Foresting away the Gengar Mimikyu. Okay, so Rukan, very interestingly, he chose to bench the Lele to grab a Cynthia, which we already mm -hmm. had two of. Um... Looks like he's going to swing into it with energy drive. Yeah. Um, I like grabbing the Cynthia. Well, I mean, it doesn't make a difference, but it technically doesn't give your opponent uh, the information that you had as Cynthia previously in your hand, which probably doesn't make a difference at all, but it's something that in other games it could. Like mm -hmm. when you already have a Kuzma, but then you go Lele for Kuzma. Yeah. Because then they think... You've laid for the Guzma, and that's the only Guzma. Whereas sometimes you can be holding on to the double. It, it might make your opponent more confident in the fact that maybe you don't have the Guzma. Alrighty. So, Rican smacking Tina for 100. Oh, my cat's just climbed over my desk and spilled a drink. You're the worst cat. Uh -oh. <laughs> Over your 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 keyboard. I'm gonna have to get a towel quickly. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> so, cat's technical issues here. Um, Omni cat special guest indeed. <laughs> so, Tor, depending on what to do, what the best course of action here is, he has the option to Kuzma um, for a KO that would require a psychic recharge onto a Malmar. Doesn't seem that big of an investment, but I think if you're Tord, you want your Giratina to go down so that you can keep bringing it back and keep spreading to those um, 
to those gear uh, to those Malamars on the bench. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. It's super interesting. Like definitely Tord um, is able to do a lot with very few resources, right? As you can see, he's just taking a look at his discard pile. He's only played one Lily so far this game. He's already down two prizes. Um, he still has 34 cards left in the deck, right? Whereas Rukan only has 21, so Rukan has been able to dig a lot deeper. Um, Rukan has the damage spread on the board, but Tord is advanced in the price in the price trade. So we'll have to see what Tord ends up doing here. So your Pandage, you missed all of Group A. Yeah, you missed all of Group A, but all the VODs will be um, uploaded to YouTube, so don't worry about that. Uh, we do see the straightforward Lily. No use of Viridian Forest to thin to draw an extra card. Um, I guess Tord will be content in attacking the active, which does kind of set up for... Um, <clears throat> It does set up for the um, Sky Scorching Light turn eventually. Though with Rukan being at 6 prizes, it's definitely going to be up to Tord, I feel, to activate that. Right? Because they like the total of both players has to be 6. And then <clears throat> that does mean... That does mean that like both players can go out of their way to set up damage on the board but then eventually one of them has to start taking prizes and eventually one of them has to activate sky scorching light okay i'm back <laughs> <clears throat> so um, Tord played a lily yeah okay he he then searched for giratina um i was saying that um like both players it seems like Tord is happy to just attack into a lily this turn which makes sense. Um, but like both players are trying to set up damage on the board for Sky Scorching Light, but they also like eventually need to take prizes. Otherwise, neither player can Sky Scorching Light. It's gonna be a standoff at some point, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a game of chicken of who activates Sky Scorching Light for the other player. This is one of those matchups that, as a commentator, you just mentioned Sky Scorching Light the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, you actually, it's actually something that both players are thinking about from turn one throughout the entire game. <laughs> it really does dictate the tempo of the game. Yeah, it really does. <clears throat> Tord has been, um, like, he took a really long while to decide to play the Lily, so his hand was filled with a lot of options, and I was also mentioning how. He's only played two Lily so far, and mm -hmm. like he's he's ahead. His board is looking good. Um, he does manage to get like the most squeeze out of um, out of each card, right? Out of each situation, mm -hmm. and he does take a lot of time to to make the moves. But that's because he's going through literally every possible scenario. I imagine. Yeah, I mean, there's no time limit. Why not? Right. Yeah, definitely. That was no something pressure. that I, that was intentional for for the games. Obviously, like I was not gonna be there policing um, at time, yeah. right? And I think like with no time limits, then um, there's no uh, tie or time based win condition. Therefore, both players are gonna end up making the their best possible moves to win the game rather than mm -hmm. stall out someone. That's what we want exactly. <clears throat> we want to see. Everyone playing a full series with none of those constraints. Yeah, and then, Tord choosing to knock himself out again. Yeah, so once again advancing the the sky scorching light. Right. It's funny that he was like, "I definitely want to knock myself out, but yeah. now what the hell do I promote?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Decision one has been made. Now for the next question on my list. <laughs> No need, and yeah, toward no need to apologize. Like I, it's completely understandable, and it's part of the part of the tournament. Like going through everything definitely makes a lot of sense here. 
to donate the coolest players. I like it's not it's not the most correct players, just the coolest ones. Yeah, just the coolest ones. <laughs> just the one that will have everyone scratching their heads after <laughs> I've done them. <laughs> that is one playstyle, I guess. How can I win whilst also trying to lose at points just enough that the win looks better? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as long as it includes Tapu Cure, you're already a winner in my book. Mm -hmm. Pedro and Tord both Tapu Curing. Yeah. Oh no, Pedro didn't. Oh no, he did. He did. He, he he technically, he did. <laughs> yeah. Really debating this. Yeah, that, that, it is pretty funny how he was very sure that Giratina was going down, but then has no clue what is coming uh -huh. up. Yeah. Oh, I can do that cool knock myself out play again. Yeah, back to back self KOs. Um, that means. I mean, honestly, kind of makes sense because if Rukan doesn't get a knockout here, he's still at five prizes, right? Uh -huh. And then Tord would. Well, if he knocks out Lele, then never mind. He would activate um, Sky Scorching Light. But as long as there's not enough targets for him uh, to get Sky Scorching Light Ted out of the game, um, then it's fine, right? To activate it mm -hmm. if it's your win condition. So I think part of Tord's thought process is well, Lele can't knock out this Giratina. So get that Lele on the bench for me for later, and I'm super happy with that. It's basically. Rukan doing a Guzmo effect for him. Yeah. So basically make Rukan set another attacker up for this Lele to just chill on the bench the rest of the game. So makes sense. Rukan's gonna go ahead and get that Gengar Mimikyu. Here we go. This is pretty interesting. Putting a three prize Pokemon down in this matchup. There's already an Ultra Necrozma in play. Double Mally on board. I guess Rukan's thinking, with only two Malamars on board, this guy can be safe for a turn. Yeah. At least uh, yeah. a turn. But again, it's just changing up the tempo of the game. Making it maybe less focused on a, a Sky Scorching Light back and forth. Yeah. I wonder if Rukan was debating the Guzma there. Um, yeah. Like, making... Yes, making counts on like, well, what are the odds that Tord is actually holding four out of four trainers? <laughs> Could be the case. Would be a huge payoff. Even three out of four is high. Yeah, three out of four is pretty high as well. But he goes for it and he gets rewarded for the risky ish play, right? Three out of four. Three out of four. I guess it's so often that you see your opponent Viridian energy for energy and then attach energy straight away. You normally expect the, there to rarely be energies in hand because you yeah. know that the opponent can always grab a new one the next turn. So there's that assumption you can make, but there's obviously the risk that there's more Malamars and Inkays, especially because Tord hasn't put that, that many down this game. But big knockout for Rukan. Squaring things up. Got damage on his Lele. Almost enough damage on both Malamars. Now there are Tinas in the discard pile for Sky Scorching Light plays. It's just how Tord can take one more knockout, whilst Rukan also has to take a knockout for him, basically. Yeah. So it might just be as simple as knockout Rukan's Inke and Distortion Door the two Mallies. Mm, well, I mean, if you do that and then Rukan, for whatever reason, doesn't take a prize then Sky Scorching Light is still not activated, uh -huh. right? Whereas... If Rukan doesn't take a prize, he could just try and knock out another Mali again like the following yeah. turn and just keep putting him in that same position. Like, uh, towards holding Guzma and Lele, so yeah. he can try and do it over a number of turns. Yeah, or, or he could also knock out the Lele, immediately activating Sky Scorching Light. Yeah, that's also true. And then using Sky Scorching Light to get rid of the two Malamars. So yeah, like... I don't know, I feel like I'm noticing, especially watching these players play, it's like, I always try to go for, like, very aggressively, how can I win in the least amount of turns? Uh-huh. 
Um, the only issue with knocking out the Lele is then it opens up Rukan's Sky Scorch. So if you're the one Guzmaring the Inke, he can then take the like the fifth prize, essentially. But it would be safe from Rukan's Sky Scorch. True, so it's still true, the same true. number of turns. The only thing that Rukan can do is use his own Tapu Cure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we might be seeing another Tapu Cure game. Poggers. <laughs> Rukan was actually very sad that it did 150. He wanted to. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Super interesting. So he was trying to continue to just set up damage. Yeah, and 3 out of 4 is actually not likely at all, so yeah. And... Yeah, Tor just mentioning in chat that I was right. <laughs> and he should KO his Lele with Lele. his own Lele. And attach the extra energy to Ultra Grossma to make sure that even if Rukan Sky Scorching lights and eliminates both Malamars, it doesn't matter because the Ultra sure. Grossma is ready yeah. to to go for that. Yeah, the path is only there if he Lele smacks into Lele. Yeah. Because oh, now if you invest to... the energy onto the Giratina yeah. and you get Sky Scorching lighted, um, yeah, you have no way to power up the your own um, Sky Scorching light. So yeah, a lot of very interesting interactions here. I still feel like just knock out the Inke with the Tina, it seems reasonable. Oh, I've got my cat crawling around my desk again. You've done <laughs> enough damage. Get out of here. <laughs> Rip play, Matt. Rip Playmat. What Playmat was it? It was just a clear one. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so Tord gonna commit. The question is, I guess now you do go for the Inke, so that you don't activate Sky Scorching Light for him? That's what I kind of feel, unless he wants to go, unless he's just worried about Sky Scorching, but he's hovering over Inke slowly. Yeah. Slowly inching. <laughs> <laughs> and then making more double, triple, quadruple checks. <laughs> thinking, uh, if Rukan then Tapu kills, I can just kill the Lele and then kill something else and win anyway, so this seems fine. I feel like it's fine. Yeah, it's like Tapu Cure, sure, it buys you one turn, but it doesn't get you anywhere closer to winning the game. Uh, this feels like it's still pretty secure for Tord. But Lele Smack Lele also seems good. Probably it seems the best, let's yeah. say. And then who does Tord knock out with this 40 damage? <laughs> I mean, Tord wants Rukan to take a prize. Rukan basically can't take a prize. What could make it tempting for Rukan? Let's think about that. Can you make it tempting for Rukan by putting it on your own Ultra and a Krosma? And maybe, like, bait him? Because Tord can still treasure out an Ultra attached and still win. Yeah. So, maybe make it tempting for Rukan to deal with Ultra, and then you just win. And it would seem like kind of a misplay. Yeah, that's the thing. You can mask it as a misplay. Yeah, I think that would be decent. Because then with a double Guzma, Rukan would have the potential to just Guzma Ultra, Guzma Lele, finish off that's the, the thing. game. Yeah, he's going to do it. Oh, I told you, little Nectarine. <laughs> <laughs> Give him, drop the bait on him right now. This is awesome. And even, like, even the timing is important, like, if you do it too fast, it's like, oh, he already thought about this, he must be up to something. Yep. And now it's, like, begrudgingly putting it here. Yeah. Making it look like Rukan can capitalize on it, saying, Rukan, look, dangle, dangle the worm, basically, saying, yeah. look, you can just kill this ultra and then I can't Sky Scorch anymore. <laughs> Which is what we've both been trying to do this whole game. 
was saying that when they had this game, they were chatting to one another th throughout. Mm -hmm. This feels like good setup from Tord, from where we're sitting. Okay, so if you're Ruken, I don't think you fall for the trap. <laughs> we have to we have to pretend that you won't fall for the trap. But how does he like if he doesn't take another prize, Tord has the potential to just be like, Oh, he didn't take a prize again, Guzman this Lele, Guzman something else, be yeah. fine. He has two targets. <clears throat> I mean I think okay, so I think if you're Ruken you wanna poltergeist again and then hope that he only has two. Right? Or attack with with Tina on the Lele. Yep. And that sets up a four prize um, Sky yep. Scorching. Same as last game. Yeah. Yep. So then Tor now can't get a knockout. That's exactly what's going on. Because then that activates Sky Scorching like for him. So. Well, they're seeing the lines. Hmm. It's so, generally super interesting here. Yeah. So both players, are, they both are holding Sky Scorching Light on board, basically. Rukan can just nest ball yeah. and Viridian towards holding treasure for Viridian, and he's already got one in play. And they're both sort of putting each other hostage <laughs> in what can you do. So I guess towards play is just trying to two-shot this uh, Gengar Mimi now, because that's three prizes for him. Mm. It's got to be what he has to do, right? I mean, I'm not sure it's... He could even, shot. instead of trying too short, he could just double recharge yeah. to the ultra and attach and be like, well, exactly. We like, yeah. because we're just going to sit around all day or what? Yeah, yeah, if you try to two shot, then you are you need back to back Kuzmas. Yeah. Whereas, as long as you have the ultra Kuzma powered up, you say, like, what up, Rukan? Are you yeah. going to KO me or am I going to KO you? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> right? So I think we're just charging up the ultra here and just saying, yeah. well, I can Kuzma. Yeah, and just making sure that um, there's no way you can't like, or making sure you have the cards to to find another ultra if the ultra gets knocked out. So mm -hmm. Rukan probably needs to let loose next turn and then hope for the best. Yeah, let loose is always the path that Rukan can choose when all else yeah. is failing. Just saying. Well, yeah. I'm sure Tord is going to be holding the pieces. So yeah, this game. It's Gonna be a recharge, recharge, pass. Yeah. I mean, Tord is probably going over all the other options available. We've just immediately concluded that that is the best one. <laughs> um, there might be a better one that we're not seeing. But... That's the thing. Yeah, like we're making a. This is probably really fine. But Tord's thinking if it's ever better to go with anything else. He might be, yeah, bidding Cynthia here. That should be telltale to Rukan that he's holding the pieces. That's the only, that's like pretty much the only problem of Viridian. Like it feels like you don't need to Cynthia, you don't need to Lily really to find much. This turn, can you, oh, he's he's eyeing up beast energy, right? So can he beast energy for win here? Mm. No, that still puts him off. Yeah, it's, um, that's it's very short. Yeah. So beast, he's eyeing up. Oh, I can't really see what purpose it's gonna have. But the thing is, when you when you stadium away a Cynthia and then play a Lily this turn, it tells Rukan that he's holding the pieces. So it's almost saying, Rukan, just you gotta let loose me, dude. Yeah, and because of that, I don't even like using um, or getting rid of the Cynthia. Yeah, because... I, think I prefer just Lily for a couple cards because you're not yeah. actually digging for much, right? Yeah. Or, I mean, I don't know, like, any sta any supporter you use this turn is a supporter you won't be able to draw to find the right combination of cards let after loose. you get let loose. So yeah. Tor just lost two supporter cards, uh -huh. um, which he will definitely not be finding after he gets let loose. Yeah. Right? There's effectively um, no playables off of it as well. It feels even worse. But there was basically yeah. no playables there anyway. Yeah. So He always wants to keep space for stuff. I don't know. I feel like I would have I would have preferred much more a pass, but just thinking of like he thinned two to two supporters, which you actually like would love to see if you get let loose. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. 
sometimes less is more. Yeah, exactly. When we we made the snap call of charge, charge, <laughs> and say Rukan what up, and yeah. now he's looking a little weaker off a of let loose. So that's a really interesting turn from Tours. The outcome is still the same. It's just he's played more cards this time and given Rukan information. Yeah, I want. I wonder what, how you say what up in Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> You, I mean, would you bench the other Ultra Gross Ma? I mean, it denies you. Yeah, it doesn't deny you anything, right? Yeah. You only bench it because you need to put down. Yeah. Put it down anyway if they're gonna knock. If Rukan's gonna knock out <clears throat> Ultra, which he basically has to do now, right? Yeah. I think if um, you're Rukan, you you dig for the for the let loose as much as you can, and then hope for the best. And you can't even dig that much, which sucks. Yeah. Let loose doesn't matter if you just bench the two Necrozma. That is true. That is very true. We're gonna see the uh, the gusting play. Looks like Tapicure. No, not Tapicure. Just the retreat. Yep. So yeah, with the second ultra down, he's chilling. Yeah, with with the stadium, yeah. Like, there's no way to avoid the the sky scorching now. Um, there was a potential for uh, for Tapu Cure, but then torches yeah, goes close my kill. Yeah, he can just even just attack the active and be fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, <clears throat> How many psychic are in towards discard pile at this moment? Unfortunately, we do not have that information. Well, that was at least two. <laughs> so that's going to be game. There was yeah. one. There was one. Yep. So Rukan just has to take the knockout with the Guzma. But we know now that the Sky Scorch can close things out. We've finally got to that point in the game. Yeah. But both players have taken enough prizes. And the recharge, recharge. It's crazy how to think how you get to a point where attacking actually loses you the game. Yeah, it's so rare. But that's just that tipping point moment. Yeah. I think. I generally think in all three games, Rukan just lost so much momentum by going for the Coco. That's the thing. I mean, he he's made it really awkward for Tord to take the six prizes. So that's what he's achieved out of the Coco. But at the same time, it feels like Tord's always been the one getting to actually use the Sky Scorched ahead because yeah. he's the one dictating the prize trade a lot of the time. So, very interesting series. Um, the fact that um, Rukan went for the 100 damage attack with the Gengar Mimikyu and then ended up hitting 150, really felt bad news for him, because then Tord didn't need to take a fourth prize, uh, sorry, yeah, fourth prize, because there was the three prize knockout available in the tag team GX Pokemon, so the Gengar Mimikyu ending up really hurting Rukan in the end there, because it did too much damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was a three prize Pokemon. Yeah. So, a little bit rough for Rukan in that series, but well played from Tord, and definitely... Something I've never seen before in the in this mirror match is a lot of interesting players from both sides. Yeah, definitely. Um, some that I definitely would not have made myself at all, especially the self KOs. Um, felt very counterintuitive, but um, I also haven't particularly um, tested thoroughly the Malamar matchup to the point where I can see how it can be good to get closer to a sky scorching light, especially if you have the advantage. Just I would not have come up with them at the time. Yeah, I, I know that that's the thing. You're basically forcing forcing it upon yourself. If you feel like you're the one that's ahead to the extent that you can be the one to Sky Scorch first, like, why not? Why not just push yourself towards the win condition first? Yeah. Uh, it makes sense in a kind of backwards way. Normally, the only time I see myself knocking out my own dudes is against, like, Mill, so I can reset Marshadow. But yeah. it seems pretty viable in Mirror, too. Okay, so... Rukan versus Tord. Tord advances to the winner's match of the series, of the group rather, and Rukan gets bumped down to the loser's match of this group B. Next up, we have Robin, our 2018 world champion, playing his 
Saptos Ultra Beast deck, and we have Azul Garcia Griego, fellow um, Poke streamer, YouTuber, and also very good competitor, who is also boasting um, Saptos with Ultra Beast. Coincidentally, I believe it's a 60 card mirror, so this wow. should prove very interesting to see. Um, lots of interactions with the Absols and the Cocos and the Coco GXs and everything. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. If you're ready, Joe, I'm, I'm happy ready. to jump into the next match. Sweet. Okay, so in three, two, one.